Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. If you're on replay, you're there straight away. Obviously, live, I need to give it a bit of time for people to build up. Um, I'm currently doing a live from my phone, which is a new experience. I always took the trouble of getting the computer and the camera out. It's a beautiful day. I hope everybody's having a great time. So today, I don't know if the banners come up. I'm talking about training horses. In fact, the title is Training Horses, Pros and Cons. And uh, that might come across as a slightly weird title, as if there could ever be the cons of training horses. So this is this is how I'm coming to this subject. Training horses, pros and cons. The benefits of training your horse are pretty obvious. But if if you find it hard to train your horse or you simply don't want to train your horse or you can't be bothered to train your horse, then surely you just go and buy a horse that is already trained. And that's absolutely correct. I'm not one of these purists which says you've absolutely got to put all your all your time and money and energy into training the horse every day, every day, every day, unless you want to. So here's an example. You see all the time on Facebook, on social media, someone will put this horse is out on the lanes and a car goes whizzing past and the horse goes sideways or spins around and it's only a young girl on it. And all the horsey community go, oh, it's so outrageous. Those car drivers, they've got no respect. Da, 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 da. And they're right. They're right, those bloody car drivers, and they've got no respect. But they're only half the problem. Half of the responsibility is to train that horse to the speeding car or the dog running out. Zana's got a great little story <laughs> about a guy called Bob and a, a horse, a dog called Poppy, a dog shout, a dog's run off and, and is hassling the horse. and. Bob shouting, Poppy, 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 and Poppy's taking no notice because he hasn't trained Poppy. And yes, bad Bob, but we could put the effort in to train our horses so that at least we're doing our half. Fireworks night. There's a good one. Who's, who's bothered about fireworks? Fireworks night. Hands up. Uh, I just put my hand up there and it's not true. I'm not bothered about it at all. Um, having said that, what training have you done since? Since last fireworks night, and if I look on my invisible deck of tarot cards, whoa, the card for nothing has come up. There's mounted shooting in America, which is a fantastic game that I want to get into, where you run about on a horse and you've got the guns firing blanks and you shoot balloons, and the horses are super cool at, at these guns going off by their heads. They're not loaded. Uh, they're firing blanks, but the blanks are of such a calibre and such a coarseness of powder that they'll shoot out maybe 15 feet and shoot these balloons and it and the balloons will burst. And it's it looks like such a good sport. It's absolutely marvellous. So I really do want to get more into that. And so I'm on these mounted shooting Facebook pages, just uh, dribbling about, seeing what's going on. And... Sure enough, how do you get them to desensitize to those gunshots? And quite simply, they, they uh, shoot the guns or play gunshots through the stereo every time that the food is getting prepared. So Pavlov reaction. Um, if you've heard of Pavlov's dog, he was the first one to notice this association could be really trained in subconsciously that you could induce a dog to salivate by playing a bell that normally plays when the food was delivered. So this association happens. The mounted shooters get these horses to associate loud bangs with the food coming. <laughs> Not rocket science. We all could have thought of that. So if, if you're worried about fireworks night, you could start off with a stereo of fireworks sounds. And every time you prepare the food, you could start it off initially at low volume if you had a whole barn full of of horses 
And that was just the way it was. You played Firework Sounds or William Tell Overture. The horses would get used to firework sounds. So training your horse has got its advantages. So what, I hear you cry, would the not advantages be? So it might be that you can't be bothered. And that, I'm not giving you a hard time. That's fair enough. If you're... If your dream, if your is simply to have the Black Beauty horse or the Yaiho Trigger horse, and and you you don't want to do all this, you haven't got time, you haven't got the know-how, it's a lot of effort setting it up. That's all legitimate. That's all fine. If your if your dream is, I just want this horse that I will simply get on, it won't kill us all, it'll just do what I want, I won't be frightened because it'll do what I want, then that's fair enough. And if you can't be bothered, can't be bothered sounds a bit harsh, I don't mean can't be bothered, but I do mean can't be bothered, I do mean can't be bothered. That's fair enough, they're your leisure activity, you know. If you have hit the golden bucket, and you have got yourself a horse which is unflappable, quite happy to go and be responsive as much as you want to be responsive, and you just puddle off doing doing what you want to do, doing the events you want to do, doing the hacks that you want to do, and you're quite happy, and you're just poodling around, you probably won't even, well, for start off, you won't know me because you won't be on my page because you won't be having a, a lack of confidence. That's, that's it. That's the, the golden egg. Okay. So some people have got the horse that doesn't put a foot wrong. You can go out and you can do anything. In which case, you don't, you don't have to train your horse. That's okay. That's okay. However, if you've got the horse that doesn't put a foot wrong and you can do anything and you're still worried and you can't stop these what ifs and you can't stop panicking and you can't actually go out and do the events that you want to do and go on the hacks that you want to go on and go out and stand in the field watching the fireworks or because you're worried. Well, then you're your expectations of what it would be like to own a horse doesn't match up to, to the reality. And that's where we get a problem. Expectations are the opposite to enjoyment. If you've got huge expectations of how this is going to be, and it's not, if we're not matching up to your blueprint, you're not going to enjoy yourself very much. If you're expecting you and your horse without any effort and without any training whatsoever to jump on, go galloping around the woods, go doing this, that and the other, then you don't get it either because the horse isn't trained or your own confidence isn't trained then your expectations are higher and your enjoyment will be lower. Stay with me on this. I have, I have thought about this. I have thought it through. I'm just trying to find the, the correct way to say it. So if your horse is good and your confidence isn't, then there is some training to be done no matter what. If you want to ever get to the point where your expectations are at the correct level as your enjoyment. Your primitive mind has the, at the center of your brain is an earlier evolved part of your brain, which has the panic response, the fight and flight response. That's the bit that seems to have no reason, no logic, no imagination, and it just reacts. It just gets us. So no matter what we know, we don't feel 
particularly safe in this situation or the other. It's a survival strategy. It's supposed to happen. And it is hypervigilant looking for problems. So if you get on your horse and you're not very confident, in fact, let's go the other way, you are frightened and you're hypervigilant looking for the problems, then all those what ifs start out. What if, what if that bird jumps out of that, that bush and my horse takes off? What if something goes bang and my horse flips out and we start having a real hard time? Right, this is, this is the thing. Our primitive minds are very animalistic. They're very similar to the horse's mind. The horse has got quite a, quite a primitive mind and its cerebral capacity, the bit with logic, imagination, reason and language, isn't very big in a horse. <laughs> it is very big in us. So if you're, if you're on a horse and either the horse needs training or your own primitive mind needs training, then you'll have some work to do. So this might not be in line with your expectations. When you decided you were going to get a horse, you were going to do all these things, you may not have realized that there's going to be training. Now, if you're not frightened, you're not going to need training. If your horse isn't frightened, it's not going to need training. But if either you or your horse is frightened, or maybe frightened is the wrong word, or just not trained to the reality of the situation, then it is going to need training. So this is the thing. You've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to be honest with yourself. Do you want this or not? If you don't need training and your horse doesn't need training, you're already happy and you're not watching my page. If you need training or your horse needs training, then you've got the option of accepting that reality and starting to get into the training program that you need. Like those examples of getting your horse used to traffic or getting your horse used to dogs or getting your horse used to fireworks or getting your horse used to drumsticks or your horse used to garden sprinklers or your horse used to bouncing Pilates balls off its bottom or any amount of things. So that's the deal. That's the deal. If you want to ride horses and either you or your primitive, your primitive mind or your horse's primitive mind needs training, then that's the deal. If you don't want to do that and you want to live in a world of enjoyment without any training, that's not available if your primitive mind is kicking off. The good news is you can train your primitive mind at the same time as you train your horse's primitive mind. So they can both be trained together, but it does require effort. If you're going to train your horse to fast cars, you're going to have to get hold of a slow car to start off with and some friends and go to the effort. And perhaps you'd want to do this with your whole bar. It's like on Sunday, the 16th, we're going to be doing circuits. And we've asked Dave and Sheila and, and Sandra to get in their cars and just come past. And we're just going to start training our horses that this is all good. Wow. What a lot of effort. But my point is that I go to that effort. I'm sure it all looks absolutely fantastic what, what we do on horses. It's like, oh, how do you get your horses to do that? Hey, do you know I very nearly got a gig of us, my team doing the pyramid. Now, I don't know if you know what the pyramid is. I don't even know if you know I've got a show. I've got a show. And it's a, a stunt show, gymnastics on horseback. It's very woo, very, very super. And we end with one of those pyramids you'd have seen various groups do it you've got three horses next to each other you've got two riders standing on the backs of the two of the three horses and then another rider standing on their shoulders and so it makes a pyramid and that gallops around the the arena at the end of the show with a big flag on top and it's all very woo and fantastic 
I very nearly got a gig and I'm so sad that it didn't come off. And if there's anybody who works for an airline who, who wants to make this happen, I would be more than happy to make this happen. And we got a gig where a Airbus 380 was going to, we were going to have the pyramid and then, as an advert for Emirates Airways, this Airbus 380 was going to come along behind the pyramid and kind of go across screen. And that never happened. And I was very sad. Oh, look at my face. I'm not saying, oh, good, that never happened. I'm clearly delighted at the idea. And uh, if I possibly could get that gig for an advert, I would be super delighted. Now, I know that that would take a lot of training. And imagine that I had done it and I put that on my page. You would all appreciate the amount of training that, that I do. And you would all appreciate what a joy uh, myself and my team and my horses are all having together. My expectation would be, bloody hell, that would be a lot of work. And it would be, it'd take months. It, oh, I don't know if it would take months, actually. It'd take a few weeks, yeah. I, I, I was just working in my head then how I was going to do it. I, I think that's I was, I was how I'm going to do it. My expectation is that it would be a lot of work and my enjoyment would be through the roof. Expectation and enjoyment are equal and opposite sides of the coin. So there we go. If you want to enjoy your horses, you do have to come to the fact that you've got work to do, perhaps. I can't think what I'm trying to say. Let me just say it with an example. You don't want to be working at 100% of your capacity. If the most you can do, because your primitive mind is going, look for the danger, look for the danger, or your horse's mind is going, look for the danger, look for the danger. If the most you can do is go for a trot around the woods, and, and that's the level that you're at, that's jolly good. But if you want to be confident at trotting around the woods, you'd have to up your game in the arena that you can do a series of jumps, shin-high jumps. Because if you can do the shin high jumps at Cantor, then trotting through the woods is well within your capacity. If you never commit to progressing, then trotting around the woods will always be your top priority. And as soon as anything happens, the muntjac deer jumps out and you get a bit of a scare, that's going to chip away and your confidence in trotting down the woods will take a little drop because there's nothing on the other side to increase your confidence. So you don't want to be working at 100% of your capacity. If you can quite happily trot, no. If, if, trotting, look, if trotting around the woods is 100% of what you can do, then you'll find that walking around the woods is a lot more comfortable because you're not working at 100%. So you do have to have the expectation that if I want to progress, I have to go to that effort. If that's not you, be honest with yourself and go, I don't want to train this horse. And then your expectations will be at the level that they want to be. Anyway, as I said, I'm on the phone, so I can't quite see the comments. Oh, I can understand the application. The only thing that is driving up and down past him. Yes, there's nothing wrong with driving up and down past him. Ah, no. Oh, blimey, that's annoying. How can you train your horse to a sound that can't easily be replicated? Grouse shooting in the winter. The lead shot hits the barn, and it's not the bang, it's the horrendous hissing noise as the lead. Well, I had to get a horse used to the rider wearing a firework pack off its back. You might have seen it from the show. And those get the, the fountains make a, a terrible hissing sound, like shh. So I'm, I'm quite with you on that. And how I did it in the end 
was by starting with the plastic bag, one of the cheap Tesco's ones back in the day when they gave away cheap, cheap bags for free. And I rode around with that, making a, a hissing sound as it rattled in the wind. And then I got a broomstick and I taped one to each side and they made quite a hissing sound. And we did that for a week. And then I'd take two on and we did that for a week. And I'd take three on. We did that for a week. Then I'd take four on. We did that for a week. Uh, and I'd say one, two, three, four. But of course, it was one at each end. So it was two, four, six, eight. Then I started taping a second layer of plastic bags until we ended up with a little lattice of four by four plastic bags. And you could imagine the sound they made. It went whoosh. And it, it was a real good replication for the sound of the fireworks. So with the fireworks, they were on our back in a little backpack and it came off in these fire pegasus wings. And it was the sight of the fire and the sound. So we had two things to get used to. So simultaneously, while we were getting used to the sound of the plastic bags, then I was also going around with a, a flame of some kind. I, I bought some fire swords from firetoys.co.uk. And so we just went around holding those. those, And then we swang them a little bit. Well, actually, we started off with somebody else just swinging this fire around. And we just rode the horse around. It was it's, it's, uh, in such tiny little increments. But you can. You, you can get there. So... You can get them used to chop, but the, what you need to do is get them used to absolutely everything, whether the, the opportunity presents it. Oh, oh, I'm back. If someone's turned up to dig a new fish pond out with a digger, that is the time to get your horse and get in the arena and start doing your figure eights absolutely perfectly and doing your circles absolutely perfectly. Because by the time you've got them used to that, we've already spoke about the Pilates ball being bounced of his back and the garden sprinkler and the, and the, and the. By the time you've done a thousand things, then by the time the thousands and one thing comes up and you say it's all right, the horse is so used to you saying it's all right. And the way that you say it's all right isn't by patting it and saying it's all right. The way that you say it's all right is by doing that circle, doing that figure eight, doing that thing that I'm saying to do. So you're training the relationship between you and your horse that when the scary thing attacks, best thing to do is do what the human says. That, in a nutshell, is everything that I everything that I do here. I've got the greatest set of horses that I'm always receiving compliments on, and most of all, I love it. I love it. You're taking these horses and getting them. You, if if the digger came out to dig the fish pond or put the water pipe in or the guys that are going to get, look we've got a beautiful walled garden here oh look at that can you see the walled garden yeah at some point they're going to have the cement mixer go in and they're going to have the the guys doing the maintenance on the wall and i'm going to be right out here because it's it's to me that's the joy the joy isn't when I get this horse fixed and I'm galloping over the fields and everything's everything's lovely and I've got no fear, then I'll be happy. That, that's not the thing. I'm happy training at the level. I'm so lucky to have horses, so lucky to have horses in this environment, in this part of history, in this part of the world, in this be beautiful land that we live in. So lucky, and I really, really enjoy it. And uh, if I get a chance to wade through some tall plants, if I get a chance to take him up a few steps, if I get a chance to wiggle down at one of the dips you get in the ground when you go out for a hack, if I get the chance to reverse round this holly bush <laughs> and just hide around the other side for no reason at all, if I get the chance to train at all, 
to me that's that's horses that's my enjoyment that's my enjoyment enjoy the journey because if you're not enjoying it now as you get more capable you won't enjoy it then because the, the 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 joy will always be a little bit further in the future so yeah i do train him a lot i know i have to train him a lot i train my own my own primitive mind a lot uh, every new thing oh tell you what if we do that emirates airplane advert i'll need to train my my, <laughs> my primitive mind quite a lot but i'll, I'll do it because i've done it before i'm used, used to that experience but in every, every part of it i'll enjoy it enjoy enjoy the journey it's it's great get some plastic bags out get some garden sprinklers put on your wet weather gear let's let's train it so that your horse will just go straight through the garden sprinklers take a photo organize a um, bomb proofing sessions once a month we're going to get all the kit out going through a gate instead of going oh god i hate gates it's like me i'll i'll do the gate it might take it might take three months to learn how to do a gate because first of all you've got to get the buggers to stand alongside it <laughs> that even getting the horse to stand alongside it, once the horse stands alongside it, good horse. I'm happy. The actual opening of the gate can come later. Let's have a look for, for some comments there. Uh, I think the problem is the horse can't see the danger to equate with the noise. The staff use a massive blower to clear the shavings and say, well, the horse are fine with it because they can see it. Okay, well, if you if you think that, then that's the way it is at your barn. Personally, I don't think that. I think that the horse is going to do what I'm training it to do, and I'm not going to make excuses for the horse not doing it. So I want I want the horse to get used to the sound of of something rattling on the roof. Well, let's get a garden sprinkler up there, and let's start it rattling in the roof. The assumption that the horses are making a fuss because they can't see what's making the noise is your assumption. You turn the music on, turn your stereo on. People have, have the radio playing. They can't see that and they don't make a fuss. I, I personally wouldn't make that assumption at all because it starts the danger of me making excuses for the horse. Oh, Bless him, he doesn't like doing that because there's a... Yeah, I... there you go. I, I wouldn't make that assumption. I wouldn't make that excuse. I would have every belief. I have got every belief that I could train the horses to do anything. If I use my intellect, break it down into bite sizes, give the horses a job while it's happening. Now, that's a bit more awkward. But if the horses had a job while it was happening... They've got something to focus on other than what was that? What was that? Now, I don't know the layout of your barn or or such like. But nonetheless, the, the principle is true. Give the horse a job. I, I was just saying a moment ago when the when the digger comes out to dig the new fish pond or put in the water pipe or the guys come with their cement mixers to do this walled garden. I'll come out and I'll do figure eights and I'll do circles and they'll be perfect. What I won't do is stand the horse looking at the looking at the digger or looking at the cement mixers saying don't. <laughs> you, you can't quite do that, can you? You can't get the horse out to look at something and say, don't take any notice of it. Well why are you pointing me standing at it then? So give the horse a job. The more the job the horse can have the job, the better. Now, I would think things on the roof and the horse in the stable, you're kind of limited to jobs, really, unless you're doing carrot stretches or something. There's a limit to what you can do. But the job could be having your dinner, couldn't it? You could record that sound and play it every time that the horse has, has its dinner. Um, it's a lot of effort. It depends how important it is to you. I mean, if they're just jumping a bit and they just don't like it, but there's no, 
no dreadful consequences and it isn't affecting your life, uh, it doesn't matter. If it is affecting your life, it's like this horse keeps throwing itself at, and, and hurting itself, then it does matter. And we're going to have to do something about it. If you've not got the opportunity to directly be putting things on the roof, then do a million different things. It's the relationship between you and the horse that when you tell the horse it's fine, it's fine. Because it was fine when the digger was doing the fish pond. It was fine when the digger was doing the water pipe. It was fine when the guys were doing the cement. It was fine when the cars were doing the slamming doors. It was fine. And, it, and you just keep working at it and working at it. If you got the expectation that you did, you didn't sign up for this when you got a horse, you were just going to do the black beauty thing then your enjoyment of that process will be less. So you've got to be honest with yourself, with, with what you want to do. My enjoyment is through the roof. I love all that nonsense. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. Lovely. Uh, there's, some good, uh, there's some good comments going on there. Yeah, you record it, play it back for a speaker. Super. Sarah Bird, hello again. There we are. So, yes, uh, I just saw the comment there that the, the roof is 30 foot high, but that, that wouldn't stop us from recording it or just doing lots of other things. It doesn't have to be the actual thing. The reason why I know that we'll be OK with the Airbus 380 is because we've already done so many other things. But above all, be realistic to your expectations and enjoy the journey. There we go. I've been rabbiting enough. Please put a comment in. Any, any comments that you want to put in, any questions that you want to ask. This is all about forming a relationship with the horse, the enjoying the journey. You get your horse out and you do all these things. And every time you do an experience, it's going to form a relationship with your horse. And with that relationship, you can then go on to other things and other things. Uh, put any comments in and uh, I'll get back to any questions that, that I feel that I can answer, which would be marvellous. The Mounted Division online course, three months study at home, is now open for taking applications for the July intake. So if you've been fancying doing that course, then... Uh, Drop a comment and I'll send you the details or just look out on the Facebook page. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Where's my hand? It's there. See you later. Thanks for listening.